Whichever way you look at it, rabies means death. The story of humanity versus various illnesses that plague is one of limitations and successes. No such disease demonstrates this better than rabies, a disease that claims the lives of anywhere between 55,000 and 70,000 people each year. It is an illness that conjures images of aggression, of foaming mouths and of a fate of certain death. Once the disease reaches the victim's brain, there is little to no hope of survival. In fact, only six people have managed to survive the illness once it reached the stage of infecting the nervous system. In today's video, we will cover the facts of the disease and how we have sought to bring it under control, and what more needs to be done to defeat it. Rabies is a virus of the Lyssa virus family, Lyssa meaning rage. It is a neurotopic virus, meaning it has a preference for targeting a victim's nervous system. The rabies virus can present broadly as one of two types, furious rabies and paralytic rabies. Furious rabies is the most common and accounts for around 80% of cases. Furious rabies displays symptoms such as hydrophobia, that is the fear of water, and occasionally aerophobia, which is the fear of fresh air, along with hyperactivity. Once symptoms appear, death usually occurs after a few days due to a heart attack. Paralytic rabies accounts for around 20% of cases and is a longer process than that of the furious form. Muscles slowly become paralysed, starting at the site of the infection. The victim then falls into a coma until they eventually die from organ failure or cardiovascular collapse. In both cases, death is painful, with the patient experiencing massive damage to their faculties. Rabies is usually transmitted to humans from bites or scratches from infected animals, notably dogs and bats, though it can be spread from other warm-blooded mammals such as skunks and horses. The virus spreads through saliva, which will then enter through the wound. At first, the victim will not display any symptoms, as the rabies virus will be in its incubation period. During this period, it will slowly replicate and spread through the victim's muscular tissues. Due to the low levels of the virus and the location, it is ignored by the host's immune system, which is why it will prove to be fatal. The goal of the rabies virus is to grow and eventually spread to a person's peripheral and central nervous system. During this time, initial symptoms of rabies often include fever with pain and strange tingling feelings around the wound site. Once in the nervous system, it will be able to spread quickly with the goal of reaching the brain. It will then pass through the blood-brain barrier, say from the immune system, which can be difficult to pass through. Even if the T-cells can make it through the brain barrier, the rabies virus is capable of fighting back and killing the defensive cells. Once the brain is infected, the virus will cause encephalitis as the virus affects the pituitary gland, the brainstem, and the hypothalamus, all key areas for regulating a person's behaviour. The way the virus affects the victim's brain before death will often result in them exhibiting strange behaviours with the goal of spreading the disease. The victim will produce excess saliva, as this is the vector for the virus to spread. The hydrophobia means the victim will not drink any water, meaning the infected saliva will remain in and around the mouth. Aggressive behaviour, especially in animals, will often result in the victim biting or lashing out, infecting others. This whole process can take anywhere from one to three months with the vast majority of this time being the incubation period, though there are reported cases of incubation lasting for up to a year. Humanity has been aware of rabies for at least 4,000 years, with it being understood in Mesopotamia that bites from a rabid dog were to blame. Early treatments for the disease include a poultice made from cloth and hyena skin to a skull of a hanged man. One popular remedy involved cauterizing the wound with a heated St. Hubert's key. St. Hubert was believed to have been able to cure the disease, and so effigies were constructed to ward off the illness with the key heated to cauterize the wound. Others believed the cause were worms that lived in the mouth, and if they were cut out, it would cure the disease. In some parts of India, it is still believed that a person bitten by a dog will be impregnated by a dog, in what is termed puppy pregnancy syndrome. 
The hydrophobia and other symptoms are incorrectly attributed to the puppies growing inside the abdomen, with treatments focusing on removing these puppies rather than the potential rabies. None of these treatments were effective, and rabies proved fatal in every case. The breakthrough in treating rabies was developed in 1885 by Louis Pasteur and Pierre-Emile Roux in the creation of a vaccine. The vaccine was collected from the spines of infected rabbits. The spinal nerve tissue was dried for a number of days before another rabbit would be inoculated with the weaker strain. The process was repeated until they had access to strains of varying potency. This material was then injected into an infected person, with boosters of the more potent strains to follow. Pasteur's method proved to be highly effective and the practice soon spread far and wide. Since its inception, the rabies vaccine has been developed and refined, though the process remains roughly the same. Once bitten or scratched by a rabid animal, it is vital that medical assistance is sought straight away. The first step is to wash the bite or scratch for at least 15 minutes. Although this will not completely prevent infection, it will reduce the viral load. It is also important to note what species of animal delivered the bite or scratch. And be aware that the closer the bite is to the brain, the less time it will take for the virus to reach it. In the case of bites from bats, due to their small teeth, one may not even be aware that they have been bitten, meaning erring on the side of caution is for the best. During the initial incubation period is when the afflicted will need to receive the course of the vaccine. This will allow the person's immune system to be capable of destroying the virus and avoiding death. The efficacy of the rabies vaccine is near enough 100%. In addition to vaccinating humans, various programs have been carried out to vaccinate wild animals and domesticated dogs. These schemes have been successful in Europe and North America, where cases and death rates are extremely low. If, however, a person is infected and they do not seek treatment, there is an incredibly minute chance of survival. One procedure, dubbed the Milwaukee Protocol, involves a patient who has developed rabies symptoms being induced into a coma. The goal is to reduce brain function as to slow the spread of the disease in hopes of giving the boosted immune system a chance of fighting the virus. Only six people are known to have survived the virus through this method. Though its efficacy is doubted by some who raise concerns whether reliance on the protocol is hampering developments of other treatments. Despite the existence of the vaccines, tens of thousands still die from the virus each year, with around a third of the deaths occurring in India. Most of the deaths in India are children under the age of 15, with bites going unrecognized, unreported and untreated. The prevalence of misinformation around the puppy pregnancy syndrome, combined with a lack of access to the vaccine, are largely responsible for the high death rates from a now preventable illness. Whilst rabies has been rendered treatable, the persistent problems of medical inequality and the lack of education or awareness about the illness allows the virus to claim tens of thousands of lives each year. In today's world, a scratch or bite from a rabid animal is no longer a death sentence, at least in the developed world. For the developing world, there is still work to do. The World Health Organization has goals to rid the world of the infections from dogs by 2030. Dogs accounting for 99% of infections. Rabies will nevertheless remain one of the most devastating illnesses in human history, due to its 100% fatality rate before the development of the vaccine treatment. The deaths today should be a reminder of the vital importance of education and access to medicine. Whilst the success reminds us that it's possible to prevent so much unnecessary death and suffering.